Hi everyone, uh, I started with the uh, first fragment of study number one by David Popper, study number one, Opus 76, part one. So it's an earlier volume of Opus 76, serving as a sort of preparatory uh, exercise towards the harder studies later. Now, they are uh, not so difficult because they are mainly in the first position, but they are really very well covering various problems of uh, the right hand, uh, as well as the left hand to some extent, but uh, this particular study uh, will focus on the string crossing on longer slurs. We are in 6-8, uh, so most of our bars will be all in one bow and they will cover various strings, so you will have to learn how to move your uh, fingers across the strings with, uh, on the bow, how to manipulate them to string cross really smoothly. Now, as far as the uh, left hand is concerned, you will need to practice earlier preparation of uh, your fingers when you change the strings. So, uh, for that reason, you may want to start uh, with slightly shorter slurs, for example, three notes per bow in those bars that are with uh, six quavers, for example, bar number one, Instead of playing the full bar, you can play three and three. In the bar where you have long note, it just doesn't make sense to split it, so you just keep it as it is. And then in the next bar, you can split it just at the beginning. Now, when you do that, let's have a look first at our left hand. What is it doing there? So, you, you will need to play it legato. And uh, when you string cross from B and A to G, what you really should be doing is to learn how to prepare your left hand earlier, how to press that G before your bow gets there. So if you do it at the same time, it will uh, create a little bit of a bump, let's say, and uh, also there is a chance you, you're going to be a little bit earlier with your bow and you will hear a little bit of an open D string earlier. Uh, so you play B, A, keep that A going while you press in your G, make sure your fourth finger is really round, it's not an easy thing to do. And then only once you're ready there, you cross with your bow. So it's quite good to, to play, practice those things really slowly at first and be rather patient. Now, in the uh, second half of the same bar, we have E, D, and then we have B. So make sure you prepare that B already before you get there with your bow. Uh, and in most of the bars, you will have example like this. For example, in bar number three, we have uh, C, A, and then please prepare your F sharp earlier. Prepare it, press it down before you get there with, with your bow, uh, so that we can have that really legato uh, connection. And this is a legato you achieve in your left hand. Uh, again, now for example, in uh, bar uh, bar five. You are preparing your E sooner, so C A prepare your E, press it, and then, then G F sharp press your D, and only then get there with your bow. So that's this is going to make sure you have a really good uh, legato in the left hand. Now we should be talking a little bit uh, about the bow. What is actually the bow doing there? And this is probably even more important. Now, the job of the right hand uh, is not an easy one either. Eh? You will need to start with uh, practicing the movement of your uh, fingers, uh, uh, changing the strings uh, on its own, on their own. So, first of all, try this exercise. Position your bow on the D string, so it's like sort of in the middle, and then first of all, straighten your fingers to get to the G string then curl them a little bit to go back to the level of the D string and then curl them up even more to get to the A string. Now, this is the sort of movement you will have to, to help you to prepare the change of the bow and then get there with your arm. So we have different levels 
of the arm on different strings but if you only use your arm it will sound quite, quite bumpy for example going from G to D if you just do it it feels quite stiff but also it sounds quite stiff as well so but if you prepare it with the fingers so you sort of start on the G but then you pair your fingers and change it and then once you do that then the arm will follow so the uh, the fingers will prepare the change and then the arm will follow changing the level similarly here to the to the A string so and if you have to do it across the string you will sort of curl the fingers and adjust on the way the level of the arm but always the fingers will start it the smaller muscles will make sure the movement is smoother now if you do the opposite you will start from the A string you will straighten your fingers together and then same here the arm will always follow second so you could practice that too first of all just three notes per bow or um, and it's quite good to actually practice it without vibrato so all that will sound a bit raw but you will really hear what is your um, uh, bow doing whether you're really not cheating with the legato you're not making up for it with uh, vibrato uh, once you have done that a few times you can uh, try six notes per bow so let me actually have a look at different fragments for example from the middle just where I uh, stopped my first presentation in bar 17 so you will have and if we look at the fingers and again I'm deliberately not using my vibrato so you can really hear the action of the bow and now look at also the left hand I'm trying to prepare my fingers earlier useful and uh, this sort of exercise is, is re will really improve your legato in lots of different pieces obviously uh, including uh, the first prelude of the Bach is waiting which is sort of in similar key and that sort of is also used yes this is the sort of movement you are going to uh, to need uh, now let me play uh, now once in tempo the middle fragments from bar uh, 17 uh, to the end and happy practice. Mm -hmm. 